now that we've gone through the whole process of, of producing a model and addressing assumptions to determine whether or not it's reasonable to use that model, let's go ahead and use it. So I'm going to use the finger lace example again and go back to the idea one of the original questions was to um, estimate the number of dead fish based on the pollution index of 10 and 13.75. And we also still need to take a look at the idea of the value and the interpretation of the value of R squared. Now again, here's our model. Um, y hat equals uh, um, 111.6554 plus 9.4926x. We say that's really the estimated dead fish, and x is really the pollution index, um, which is spelled wrong, but that's okay. You can figure it out. Um, pick which spelling you want, I guess. Um, we want to use this model to estimate the number of dead fish if the pollution index were found to be 10. What this is saying is take the value of 10, substitute it in for pollution index, now we have some numbers, do the arithmetic, and the value you get is your estimate for the number of dead fish. Okay, so what that's really going on is, here's our scatter plot of the data, and I'm not sure where on here, but I'm going to say roughly here, I'm just guessing, is 10, the pollution index. Now, we don't have a data value at 10, so what we're going to do is use the value on the line, that y value, that y hat, is going to be our estimated value of, of dead fish. Now, let's go ahead and go to the calculator and actually do that. There's a regression line again. If I press trace, you see it's blinking here on one of the data values. Press the down arrow key once. And now I'm actually on the line because you can see the equation here. And I have the x and y coordinates. Well, I said a value of 10, so if I simply type in 10, 1, 0, so I type in 10 for x, hit enter, it's going to jump to the location on the line where x is 10. And it's going to tell you the predicted number of dead fish is 206.58. So I'm going to come back here and say that value is 206.58. Now, is that a valid estimate? Uh, I'm not going to work with prediction intervals um, here. However, based on the assumptions that we went through, we're saying, yeah, if the assumptions you use the model are reasonable, then this estimate should be pretty reasonable. Okay, next, what's up? We need to estimate the um, number of dead fish with a pollution index of 13.75. So that means put 13.75 in for pollution index, and the value we get out will be our estimate dead fish hat, our estimate for dead fish. So I'll go back to the calculator again, type in 13.75, and oops, got an error. Actually, this error is good, because what the error is telling you is that you shouldn't have never done that. Let's take a look and see what actually happened to us here. If I look at my data, the biggest value on the x-axis is... 11.6. So that means in the scatter plot right here, this has an x value of 11.6. That's the biggest x value I have. Over here, that's the actual value of y. Right here will be the y hat, the estimated value for 11.6. But we asked about 13.75 which is actually off the screen. That's all we got that error. But this brings up a good point. This line actually goes off into infinity. However, we do not want to use regression beyond the, the data scope that we have. So my smallest value of x, let's look at the data again. The smallest value is 1.3. That's right here. Let me switch colors. 1.3. So I want to keep my prediction within 11.6 and 1.3. Any value in here is fair game. Below 1.3, above 11.6 is not a good idea. That's a very, very, very bad idea. See, the problem is we don't know what happens to the data up here. It's possible that if we were to have more data, it's possible that the data could level off or even go down or possibly even suddenly shoot up much, strong, much, 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 much more steeply, in which case using a linear model would be inappropriate. Likewise, 
below 1.3, think about this for a moment. If this is 1.3, then 0 must be like over here someplace along the x-axis. So if I were to estimate at negative 2, I would get a negative number of dead fish as an example. Um, what does it mean to have a negative number of dead fish? See, it just does not make any sense to um, regress beyond this data range. And I just guess at the negative two. It may make, we may need a bigger number, like a negative 50 or negative 100, something like that, to really get an estimate of negative fish. But th the point is, a negative value of x doesn't make any sense to begin with, because how can you have a negative um, pollution index? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so um, is the value and interpretation of r squared. R squared is referred to as the coefficient of determination. And really what that does is that gives us a, the percent of the variability that we're seeing, because there is variability here. See, there's, there's variability here. The variability that we're seeing um, in the Y data is the percent of that variability that our X variable is explaining. So as R squared gets bigger, it's saying I'm explaining a higher and higher percent of this variation, which means a better model. If you can explain all of the variation, then in theory you have a pretty good model. And the only way we can do that with simple linear regression is if correlation was 1. Because if it was 1, that means the data lined up in a perfectly straight line. So our linear model would be a line that hit every data value and the variability would be zero. We explained 100% of it. So the um, interpretation for the coefficient of determination is simply the amount or the percentage of um, variability in the um, dependent variable, the y variable, that's being explained by the independent variable, the x variable.